name is Michael Sadi. I'm Claire Austin Sharifa. And I'm Joshua Jeffrey. We are students from Opening Stimulation Teaching Learning Center. Now we are going to present our discussion on green building assignment regarding indoor environmental quality in hospital. And for this discussion, we decided to choose Sarawak General Hospital because it is the biggest hospital in Sarawak and equipped with high technology, medical facilities and building technologies for building comfort. Before we present the case study of our selected building, let us discuss the indoor environmental quality in general and what we have understand about this topic. Based on our previous group study, indoor environmental quality refers to all environmental factors that affect the health and comfort of occupants inside office buildings. The air and environment can be influenced by chemical, biological, and physical agents that may come from occupant activities, building materials, or the ambient environment. Indoor environments are highly complex and building equipment may be exposed to a variety of contaminants in the form of gases and particles from office machine, cleaning products, construction activities, carpet and furnishings, perfumes, water damage, building materials, uh, microbial proof like fungal, mold and bacteria. It is also including insects and outdoor pollutants too. Other factors such as indoor temperature, relative humidity and ventilation level, noise and lighting can also affect how individuals respond to their indoor environment and in combination contribute to complaints by the consumer. Understanding in the indoor environmental sources and influences and controlling them can often help prevent or resolve building related worker symptoms. IEQ element essentially makes a multidisciplinary approach such as uh, indoor air quality and acoustic comfort. Yes. Other than that, and then thermal comfort and visual comfort. Indoor air pollution control is important to reduce negative impact on occupant health from furnitures, moisture, odors, smoke, heat, dust, airborne bacteria, and carbon dioxide. All components used shall be safe and shall not possess any harmful materials to the environment. The furniture item shall be not toxic to indoor environment. As we have mentioned, we choose Sarawak General Hospital for our case study. Sarawak General Hospital is the largest state hospital in Sarawak, located at Kuching, Sarawak, and was founded on 1870. The hospital at its earliest day is known as Kuching General Hospital. The hospital is divided into several departments and buildings. The list of buildings are Canteen, Secretary and Neural Operation Building, mm -hmm. Clinical Block, Laboratories, Medical Office, Vector Control Ward, Inner Patient Block, mm -hmm. Kitchen, Main Block, Mortuary, Radiotherapy Room, Engineering Block, and General Ward. And now we are going to focus on Vector Control Ward, which is also known as Ward Pengasingan Penyakit Penyakit. The building is situated at the right place. Not all of the blocks are oriented according to the strategic orientations. This is because some of the building, like vector control, does not want the inside building air to mix up with the outside air to contain the possible germs and virus. Uh, the building most of it uh, make use of the passive solar function. The elements that are mostly applied in this building are to store the heat which the material used in mensary, water and other wall compound that can store heat in order to maintain thermal comfort. There are other passive solar functions that also collecting heat such as south facing glazing to control the heat which is light shell, insulation and light shaded painting. 
the building are optimizing the building orientation in order to incorporate its passive solar system. The elements that are taken into consideration are rectangular floor plans elongated on an east-west axis, mm -hmm. and then glass surfacing wall, thermal storage medium exposed to solar radiation, mm -hmm. light shelves overhang or other shading device that can shed the south-facing elevation from the sun, and the last one is window on the east and west walls. Actually, there are several existing elements in the building that we can study from. The first one is heating, ventilation and air conditioning, which is also known as HVAC system. This system is necessary elements in order to maintain the good indoor in air quality. The system is designed to provide thermal comfort and also responsible to provide fresh outdoor air to dilute interior airborne contaminants such as odor from occupants, volatile organic compounds emitted from the interior furnishings, chemical use for cleaning, mm -hmm. and many more through the use of uh, exhaust fan to dilute the contaminants. Ventilation with ventilation air is another economically and technically preferred engineering control. This engineering control is usually applied in buildings in which major sources are under control and no special measures are required. Ventilation air is made up of circulated air and outdoor air, whereby outdoor air is used for dilution. Dilution refers to reducing the concentration in indoor air contaminants with the introduction of clean air. The maximum removal of airborne microorganism is either necessary or required for microbial pollution. Thus, high efficiency particulate or HP, HEPA or ultra low penetration air ULPA filters are used to create an indoor environment with very low particulate levels. However, the total control of airborne microorganisms is not required for many stations. There are various types of filters with different applications which can be used to provide necessary efficiency of such conditions such as dry media and extended surface filters. One of the engineering control used for control of airborne microorganisms in healthcare facilities is the use of ultraviolet UV radiations. Mechanical ventilator air passing through the UV lens will be sterilized to prevent cross infection. Yeah, this method is known as ultraviolet germicidal irradiation UVGI, whereby short wavelengths are used to reduce the concentration of active microorganism U UVGI can effectively kill 99% of the airborne vegetative bacteria tested. Mechanical ventilation is also the elements that need to be considered for a good indoor air quality level. This application of mechanical air condition ventilation system will need to perform the maintenance of positive indoor air pressure relative to the exterior and can actively control indoor air humidity to be no more than 70% relative humidity without the use of active control that will consume additional energy. The mechanical air ventilation must be designed to keep the potential spread of the contaminants is kept low within the building. The material used must not include those that emit chemical, bacteria or fungi to the supply air. Although air intake should be placed where the air admitted is likely to be cleanest, taking into consideration the outdoor air quality standard. Humidity and air flow rates significantly affect the concentration of biological contaminants. Mm -hmm. By controlling the air flow, you can control the moisture. Excessive moisture in building must be controlled during the retrofit designs construction and operation stages by the consideration 
and the control of the flowing success mm -hmm. in the case of rainwater, infiltration of moisture, air, diffusion of moisture through wall, mm -hmm. groundwater extrusion, leaking slide, indoor moisture sources, and construction moisture. For our conclusion, it is good implementation in hospital building because it is one environment whose occupancy ratio is high and continuing. Occupant of office or school building could close for a day. Residential buildings could be unoccupied for some period. But a hospital facility must always have an occupant. And at every single moment, as long as the facility is operational, the concept of the hospital is a place for occupants rather than being a place for scientific inquiry. Hospitals and healthcare facilities are buildings that require proper design for diverse envi environment due to their nature. The comfort of occupants and the spread of germs should be considered in the design of such facilities. Airborne disease has become a serious concern after the spread of influenza H1N1, mm -hmm. severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS mm -hmm. viruses. Healthcare facilities, particularly those built in the past, do not consider air as the transport medium for in infectious disease. Mm -hmm. An excellent indoor quality building process a life cycle process from design to the construction implemented a green building materials and methods. All of the indoor air quality methods must be factored into the building design and construction process. A high performance green building will not only give benefit to the occupants but also provide a sustainable and better environment to the surrounding and human. Based on the elements exist in the building, there are several problems that are noticed. The first one is the inconsistent services of the HVAC system. It is recommended that the HVAC system are taking a consistent maintenance schedule in order to make sure that the system are always working in order to provide a comfortable building for the occupants. It is recommended also that the HVAC system using, using a green AC motor in order to increase the performance without affecting the indoor air quality. The hospital humidity and airflow rates also must be under control. This is because the humidity and flow rates significantly affect the concentration mm -hmm. of the biological contaminants within the buildings. By controlling the airflow, you can control the moisture inside the building, which is this building lack of. The hospital also recorded that there is in case of rainwater, infiltration of moisture, mm -hmm. distribution of moisture to wall and indoor moisture sources. All of these problems can be come from the technical issue mm -hmm. and the edge of the building. But this matter is a serious issue and it is better than this issue is eliminated from the building. Like being recommended, the introduction of air barrier is one of the alternatives that can prevent this problem from occurring again. Mm -hmm. Air barrier can help control the building airflow mm -hmm. through and within the building itself. That's all for our presentation regarding indoor environmental quality. For our selected building, it is Sarawak General Hospital. We hope our case studies make the assignment requirement as per Open University Malaysia standard. And thank you to Sarawak General Hospital for this information in order for us to finish our assignment. Thank you. Thank you.